want to thank all of you for continually coming on to our Bible studies because there's there's no Bible study. We don't we don't have the students or the people to come on in and, and, and have the Bible study. <laughs> I mean we can have Bible study by ourselves, but when we have a bunch of you in the midst, it, it makes it all the fun and all the enjoyable. And I look forward to the, um, the for Sister Angie being our teacher on tonight. I think this is a beautiful lesson. And so um, before we get started with everything, if all of us, if we can please bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just asking you on today, Lord. We just asking you that you could just please just look on those people that's in Baltimore, Lord. The ones that were on the bridge when it collapsed, Lord, we, Lord, we just we ask that you touch their families, Lord, and um, give them peace, Lord. Whatever the situation was, Lord, we ask that you just touch them and heal them as only you know how. And Lord, for all the other things that's going on in the world, Lord, all the wars that's going on, and all the brother against sister, and sister against brother, and just all the nation, Lord, we ask that you give us peace, Lord, and let them know that Jesus is the reason that we are here, and Jesus took all our sins away. So if they can just remember all of those things that Jesus did for us, then maybe we can be a better nation. And Lord, we just ask that you continually bless our our um, pastor, our first lady, Lord. Um, bless all the mothers, Lord, um, that you will heal their bodies, Lord. And please, Lord, a special prayer out for our children, Lord. Um, a lot of things going out there. And, Lord, we just ask that you just keep a covering over our children, Lord. And of all of us at Faith Temple, Lord, Lord, we just ask that you continually bless us, Lord, that we go higher and higher in you, Lord. We know that if you just step in the midst, even for a moment, Lord, that will be most enjoyable to our souls, Lord. And just like the saying says, Lord, we'll never be the same once we go in there and we'll never come out the same. That's what I mean, the same, Lord. Because once you in there, you change everything about us, Lord. It turns all our sorrows into gladness, Lord. And, Lord, we just thank you for all the things that you've done in our lives, knowingly and unknowingly, Lord. And, Lord, again, thank you for allowing us to have this avenue to come on and continue our Bible studies. We um, thank you for Sister Sydney for keeping us up on our do Zoom uh, we thank you for our teachers, Sister Angie, Sister Terrell, and even for our other teachers, for Superintendent um, Carzell for um, Sunday School, um, uh, uh, church, church Mother for her wise words of wisdom, and our youth mother, Mother Lynn Dow, Lord, and Mother Randerston, our prayer Lord, warrior, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you just bless everyone, Lord, in the sound of my voice. And Lord, we're going to give you all the honor and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen ladies and gentlemen. We have a beautiful, lovely lesson. Your labor is not in vain. So we have a few background readings. They are coming from Psalms, the 128th chapter in the second verse. We have Proverbs, 14th chapter, the 23rd verse. Colossians, 3rd chapter, the 23rd and the 24th verse. And we have Matthew, 11th chapter, 28th verse. Our devotional reading was coming from 1 Corinthians. 15th chapter, the 57th and the 58th verse. Matthew, a 20th chapter, the 1st to the 16th verse. Our central verse is coming from Ecclesiastes, the 4th chapter and the 9th verse. So ladies and gentlemen, we have again our teacher for tonight, Sister Angela Smith. And can we please all say amen as she comes. Amen. 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 Let me get myself off here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Praise the Lord, saints. Thank you, Sister President, Sister Cheryl, and to give honor to God and to my Lord, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and to 
our pastor, Elder Cotton, Pastor Cotton, and, and our elders, our assistant pastor, Elder Russian, to our to our mother Peace and to to Mother Kid that's with us, and she's been with us for a while, hanging in there with us, and I thank God for that. I love to see that, see her name come up, and to each and every one of you, my sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, I love you all. I'm going to go right into our lesson, and I hope you love me too, especially after this lesson. Well, it's a good lesson. <laughs> it's a good lesson, and God is going to help me through the power of the Holy Spirit to bring it out. Okay, so let's get started. Amen. Um, and I just, I, I just solicit your prayers, and I ask that you just join in with any comments or questions that you may have as well. But we're going to move right along because uh, um, keeping up, and we want to stay on schedule with our time. So our lesson again: laboring. Your labor is not in vain. Your labor. And as I was reading this, I realized that they're talking to the believers. This lesson is going to be talking to the believers. Your labor is not in vain. Proverb, our, our central verse is this. Pray for me, saints. Uh, our central verse says two. It's found in Ecclesiastes 4, and verse 9. And so we want to get that because I'm... We're going to read a few verses beyond beyond that, but I just want to um, to read the actual uh, central verse, and it says that two two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Uh, two people are better off than one person, right? For uh, they can help each other succeed. And that's what it says in the other translation. And that's um, Ecclesiastes 4. Now let's read 7 through 10 and just put all that together. Ecclesiastes 4, 7 through 10, and we're in the, um, the central verse here. Uh, it says, Then I returned and I saw vanity under the sun, there is one alone, and there is not a second. Yea, he has neither children nor a brother. Yet is there no end of all his labor, neither is his eyes satisfied with riches. Neither said he, For whom do I labor and be, be and mm, lost my place and he, for whom do i labor and believe my soul and leave my soul of good this is also vanity yea it is a sore travail man's work is never done this is ecclesiastes and he's talking about the natural man his work is just never done, and he's just never satisfied. When he's just when he think is all good and all settled and all done, something else happens, and he has to get back on, and get back on that horse and start all over again. Man's work is never done. His labor is never done, and and that's in the natural. And and and, and if um and and in this, I like that first part where it says. In verse 8, there is one alone, and there is not another with him. Yea, he has no children, or some another translation said he has no son, he has no brothers. Yet there is no end to it. No, he has no help. And there's a lot of people that's like that where life will never end from their labor because and their success and be and and will never come to completion because there is no help there is no help so it's just on and on and on and on trying to live each day and trying to be satisfied with yourself in yourself each day and and basically it's saying that at least if you had a brother or or some children you know, you can um, share this labor with and, and rejoice together, but it's just you. It's just, 
And not everybody's feeling sad about that. People love being single. There's nothing wrong with being single. But the point he's trying to make it that is that all that labor that you're putting into it and it ends with nothing at the end. You end up with nothing at the end. So, but our lesson is labor, our labor is not in vain. He, Ecclesiastes, he's saying it was all vanity. It was just all in vain for what? And so I have to bring that out because this, that's what our central verse, that's the first verse that they gave us in the central verse. But I, I added a couple of verses to it myself. So here's my central verses that I've added. It's two of them, but Second Corinthians, if we would go to Second Corinthians 4.16. In 2 Corinthians 4.16. You, you have it, 2 Corinthians. It says, for which cause, let's read 15. It says, um, the, uh, for all things are for your sake, that of the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of, of many, Read, read, um, um, read down uh, of many renowned to the glory of God for which cause we faint not, but through, but, um, I'm sorry, I'm really <laughs> stumbling here for verse 16 for which cause we faint not, but through our outward, though our outward man perishes. Yet in the inward man is is renewed day by day. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Our light afflictions, for our light afflictions, which is but a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Our labor is not in vain. Amen. Our light afflictions, talking about what we go down here, what, just like what we just finished saying about Ecclesiastes. It like the work never ends, never ends. But when we're doing it unto the Lord it, uh, and in and, and thanksgiving, you know, um, he's saying that this is just a light of affliction in comparison to the reward that we will receive at the end. Amen. It's so so uh, let's not faint. Let's not think Galatians um, 6 and 9. It says, um, just going to Galatians 6 and 9. It tells us, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season, we shall reap if we faint not. These are scriptures that you just want to jot down and encourage yourself. Keep yourself encouraged as you go along and, and you feel like just giving up and throwing in the town. You just say, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> my reward is I, I'm going to get my reward, you know, and, 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 and remind yourself this is just a light affliction in comparison to what God has promised me. And I'm going to get my, I'm not going to throw in the towel. I'm not going to give up and I'm not going to faint and get weary because God said in his word, we will walk and not get weary, <laughs> run and we won't faint. And, and because the Lord is beside us and his joy will be our strength. Amen. His joy will be our strength. And so we just hold on. We mount up with wings as eagles. Amen. But we just have to stay in the race. All right. So those those are my those are my add-ons into into these. Um, I wanted to bring in uh, something just. But like I said, this lesson is for the believers. All men are going through. Amen. But not everybody's going through for the Lord. <laughs> not everybody. Everybody's going through for themselves. Um, even in the sense of. In the spiritual sense, there was a, a lesson, a previous lesson that took us to Matthew's. And I didn't pick it up because it was just more than what we can handle with the time 
um, with the time, but it was in our, it was going to be in the um, devotional reading. And it's Matthew's, it's the story in Matthew's, Matthew's, Matthew, the seventh chapter. And it's the story about the end time, pretty much so, when, G when uh, Jesus was telling this story. If you go to the seventh chapter of Matthew's, I'm just going to read, um, not even going to read the whole thing. Let's read verse 22 and 23, and, and then I'll tell you what's happening. Seventh chapter 20, 22 and 23. Let's go 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wondrous wonderful works and then will i pro profess unto them I never knew you. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Wow. You did all that. And you're saying you did it in my name, but you're being rejected. You, your work was in vain. What happened here? He tells us right there. You workers of iniquity. Doing it for self-gain. Amen. Doing it for filthy and lucre. Be, doing it to be seen, to be famous. Amen. You weren't doing it for my name's sake. You were doing it for your name's sake. Remember, <laughs> when I read that and then I thought about the, um, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees or, or who, you know, these that's always coming against him and, and they said that he cast out demons <laughs> by the devil. And Jesus said, if I'm doing it by the devil, who are your sons doing it by? You know, who, who are they casting out devils by? And so, and, uh, and, uh, suddenly I, I say it like this. And then suddenly there was a quietness. <laughs> nobody answered. Nobody answered. And so it was just, you know, and she, and this is what this is. Who knew your sons casting them out by? Because they're sure not doing it in my name. You're sure not doing it in my name. So no, there is no reward for those who are doing things. Even if you're saying you're doing it in Jesus' name, God knows the heart and he sees your evil and your wicked schemes and you're not fooling him. Amen. But to the believer, but to the believer, God has so much to, and so much wants you to be encouraged and to believe and to, Stand fast on his word that you are not, your work is not in vain. Amen. Hebrews, I, look at this. And I'm going way ahead of myself because I have this, this one way over there, but I, I just got to bring it out. This is my end coming into the, into the lesson till I loosen up and then just be able to uh, give it to you. But look at Hebrews um, chapter six. Hebrew chapter six. It is Hebrews with a six. Uh, chapter six, verses nine. Let's start with verse nine. I'm bringing out. I'm bringing out this lesson in in the light of it's to the believers, but then everybody's trying to get in on it and thinking that they can get in by their works. It's not about our works. Not when it comes down to what the reward is going to be. Amen. But we have to, we have to do. He left us here to do the work. Let's see. Nine says, um, six and nine, but beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. Am I in Hebrews? For God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labors of love which ye have shown towards his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister see god knows the heart he he knows who's doing it for the right reason and we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. 
be not weary in well doing. Do it until the end. If God has given you an assignment, and he has given each and every one of us an assignment, do it. Do it with joyfulness, gladness, knowing that your reward is great in heaven. And we know what that reward is. We, we, we know that it begins with what we have. We already have because Jesus said we will not die. Eternal life. Amen. Eternal life. But there's rewards for your work as well. Um, I just wanted to share that. Let me read number that verse 10 again. For God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labors of love. You see the difference? That's the kind of work and labor yours is, is coming from the heart. It's labor of love. It's labor of love, which you have shown towards his name in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. You didn't just do it once just, just to be seen. You didn't just do it once just to be able to say you did it. You're doing it now and again and again until the end because that's what you understand that God has called you to do. He saved us unto good works. Amen. Unto good works. All right. And then we are to continue the work until Jesus come. I, 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 I like that verse. That's a beautiful verse because uh, people do get discouraged. And, and not in, in not so much in a negative way. But they just feel like that even maybe God's not not uh, paying attention. I'm doing all this work and all this labor. People certainly not paying attention. Lord, am I doing your will? Am I doing what you want me to do? Keep on doing it. You know it's a good work. Keep on doing it. Amen. God knows. Let's um let's read our um Let's go ahead on and read our introduction, that first paragraph, if you will. Uh, someone, if you'll read that first paragraph. I will. Yeah, thank you, Sister Marcia. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. It says, from the beginning of the first chapter of the Bible, we hear about God working. He created, he created a world, animals, and man, and he was pleased with what he had done. He placed man in the Garden of Eden and gave instructions on how to work and keep his world. Mm -hmm. Working and laboring have always been required of mankind since his fall from grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know that story and we know how it began in the book of Genesis. And we know what happened when they fell from grace. They had to labor with their hands. Amen. And they were put out of that 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 paradise that garden of eden that they were in and all they had to do is tend to it you know but now you gotta labor you gotta work hard to get a to get a carrot to come out of the ground you know yes it's just and, and that's how it is from this point on you got to chase after those carrots amen you have to work far hard for them but because you chose Man chose, Adam chose for us, Eve chose for us, and it became part of the seed of man. It's just in us. We're all born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and for that reason, we have to work hard for our living. When God just wanted us to just tend to his garden and, 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 and just, and, and be blessed, you know, and rest and, and, and enjoy the life the God-given life that he had given us, but we chose to go a different way. Uh, in our, our, Thank you, Sister Marcia. That was a reading. And so that's what happened. And that's why we're in the predicament and the situation that we're in now. Man running around trying to keep up with the Joneses and trying to keep up with, with this and that and it's, and it's never enough. So, but, but, Cause it's in our, we took it into our own hands. We said we can do it. I'll handle it, you know. And now we're crying. <laughs> when you're crying, it's because you're falling behind. Yeah, I'm not handling it. Somebody need help, you know. The next part of it says this: But when man, when men labor and work, they want to know what they will get from working. 
There's nothing wrong with that. It makes a lot of sense. We need we need food on the table. We need this. We need that. We know. So when I go out and I and I apply, come to you and I'll do your yard. I'll wash your car. I'll I'll be your bookkeeper. I'll I'll be your runner. Whatever. But I I need a check at the end of the day so I can put some food on my family's table. We expect to be paid for our labor in the natural, right? We expect to be, we get up early in the morning and go to work. Not because, not so much because it's something that we really, really want to do. We really, really want to sleep in late. We really, really want to be on vacation with our children and having fun. But we really, really have to work in order to make all that happen. So we get up early and we go to our jobs and we do the work for a paycheck. And it's really nice if you like your job, what you're doing, you know, it makes a, it makes a little different. It helps a little bit, but if you didn't have to, would you be there? <laughs> but listen, so, um, so, so there's nothing wrong with our, our laboring for a reward for a paycheck, because that's what, that's what work is all about in this present world. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a householder who went early in the morning and, and to hire laborers for a penny a day. And he made an agreement to pay the workers a penny a day. And he sent him, the workers, he sent him to his vineyard to work. Now this is, this story right here is found in our devotional reading, it is the um, Matthews. If you look at devotion, it's Matthews 20 verses 1 through 16. But they give it, they're giving us a, a pretty complete summary here. So he sent them out to work. Most of the day he found, and most of the day they worked. Most of the day he found more workers standing idle and he made agreement with them and sent them to work in his vineyard. At the 11th hour, he also found men standing idle and asked them, why were you, why were they, asked them, why were they not working? And they answered and said, um, no one has hired us. He then said, he, he then sent the workers into his vineyard. He sent them into his vineyard. Also, at the end of the day, he began to pay them. Uh, at the end of the day, he began to pay them <laughs> by giving them each a penny. Listen to this. Now, remember, he started out early in the morning, went back out in the afternoon, found some more people, went back uh, later on, found some more, a group of people standing around, sent them at all these different hours and said, oh, well, I got work for you. Go work in my vineyard. Go work in my vineyard. I believe some of them, the last group only worked about two hours. The first group, eight hours, put in a whole eight hour day, you know, looking at how. And then he, it said at the end of the day, he began to pay them by giving each a penny. He paid them, giving each of them a penny. Some felt that they should have gotten more. So they murmured and complained to the householder. He reminded them that he had made an agreement with each one of them and he paid what he had agreed to pay. Now here's our note. Here's our side, our sidebar. Every believer can be assured that if he works, God is going to reward each according to what he has agreed to pay. Amen. Amen. That's our sidebar. So in our, in our um, key terms, they murmured, right? They murmured and complained. What does, I'm, I'm, I want somebody to just tell me in your own words, what were they doing? What does murmur mean? They murmured. I see. I know we have it in our complaint. key verse, but don't read that. Tell me in your own words. Go ahead. <laughs> Murmur means complaining. Um, uh -huh. Always. Uh, 
complain about, you know, things that there's always one of, oh, this person makes me sick, or, you know, always complaining about something. <laughs> always and, complaining. And, and, and yeah. in, a, in, a mad, in an evil way. Mm, got you. Good. Good, good. You added that part. That's a murmur. Yeah. Anybody else I want to say it? Any... For no reason. Huh? That they were just, just fussing and complaining for no reason. <laughs> they thought they had a reason. They thought we we we'll look at that. Uh, Sister Cindy, did I see your light? You light up. Yeah, I just said when you're talking mess under your breath, under your breath, under your breath, talking under your breath. Look at this. Wait a minute, huh? So what was the complaint? What was the complaint? You all know the story. What was the complaint here? I think one thing they was murmuring about is because some people got more than what they got and they felt they should have gotten more than the others did. Mm -hmm. All right. They all got paid the same amount, right? But what happened? Some of them worked eight hours and some of them worked two hours and one hour and they all got paid the same amount. So, so those that worked for the whole day felt that, wow, if he's just giving, if he's giving them a penny, he must be going to give us more because we worked longer than they. Every believer can be assured that if he works, God is going to reward him according to what he has agreed to pay. Whose vineyard did they go work in? He went and they worked in the householder's vineyard. It was his vineyard. Whose money was it? It was his money. Who made the agreement? They made an agreement with, they accepted what he said he would pay, but they murmured, but they murmured. And sometimes we look at our different, our, our different positions and titles and, 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 and jobs. And sometimes it look like I'm working so much harder than the other person. Like Martha thought Mary was being rude because she was doing all the work and Mary wasn't. She was just sitting there, you know, listening to Jesus. But we know what Jesus said to her, right? Ah, she chose the best part, but we can't murmur. Talking to the believers, you have to be assured that God is not going to stiff you, that he's not going to, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, underpay you, you know, <laughs> he's going to give you exactly what he said he would. And all of us are going to get paid. We're all going to, we're all already have what he said he's going to give us. And that is eternal life. Amen. That's what he said he's going to give us. And then our rewards that we get because of our works is going to be based on our works. So if you want a big reward, a greater reward than me, get busy. Amen. <laughs> Because I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to be mad at you. Get busy for the Lord. All right. So um, that that was the murmuring. And so they and so they were dealing with the laboring. Um, uh, that word labor in our key key verse um, in keys. Can somebody read the um, the word labor expenditure expenditures. Of physical or mental efforts, especially when difficult or are uh, compulsive, to strive to to affect or achieve. Somebody give me a, a definition for the word labor. Something a little more simpler than that. What in your own words? What do you have for the word labor? To me, my I have two words: hard work. Okay, somebody give me a definition. <laughs> <laughs> mm hmm Task. Huh? Task, T-A-S-K. Okay. Your task mm -hmm. is work, labor, something, what you're doing, physical, huh? They got physical and mental effort, especially when difficult or compulsive, compulsory, compulsory, you gotta look that word up how they say it. I can't even say it. But we see we anybody else labor. Is anybody laboring? <laughs> well, you know what? It's used in different concepts as well. 
they when a, when, when a mother's about to give a child, they say she's in labor, huh? She's in labor, so hard work, pain, huh? <laughs> if we just use that, uh, all right, so. Um, this is what we're talking about. Your labor is not in vain. Your hard work, your pain, backs and feet aching, hard work. Ah, go home and feel good about it because you know it's not in vain. You know you're going to get paid. Amen. Amen. And so let's go ahead on and finish and go and get into our, um, our verses. Any comments or questions? on what we've talked about so far. While I look at my notes. <laughs> you know what, before we get into our, our lesson, go deep into our lesson, I want you to understand something. I want to share something with you that you may already understand, but I, um, in, in just in my own words, that the work that God left us here to do is a work of love. And do, do you not know, or what I come to understand is, um, Holy Spirit, help me here with this. God, the work that he gave us to do is to go into all the world and make disciples. Go and preach the gospel. Let the people know that the kingdom of God is at hand. That's our job. That's what he called us to do. The second, the, the feeding and the laying on of hands, the healing, the sick, that's all secondary. That's all uh, to get your foot in the door, <laughs> so to speak. Amen. But God does that. But guess what? In every one of those situations, let's look at brother Lazarus. God raised him from the dead. He did it for the sake of the people to see it. But you know what? Lazarus still died and he still was buried. So all this work that we're doing is just a sidebar to get, to get our foot in the door, to let people know that Jesus died for their sins and they don't have to die and go to hell. Amen. It's an opportunity. So if we're getting busy, and we're just busy, busy, busy working and laboring and laboring and saying we're doing it in the name of, G of, of Jesus in his name. But we never open our mouth and share the gospel. Do you know you did it in vain in the sense that you really didn't do what he called you to do? Our work and our and our labor of love is to be is to the brethren. It's to the church. He he called us and we have to look out for each other. And where in the verse that we just saw, we read it in Hebrews. It's for the saints. But when we do it outside of the church, it's for the opportunity to share the gospel. But we have to take care of each other within the church because we're a family or bot and we are the body of Christ. And we have because there's one scripture that says that you do good, especially to the household of faith. You, we are to do good to the especially. And so what I'm saying is the difference is God loves everyone, but he says the poor will be with you always. And so we have to do what we need to do for Jesus. Amen. What he has left us here to do. And, and, and as we go along the way, we're going to help people. We're going to, and, 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 um, elder, um, Bassin broke it down as to what the as what the the um, missionaries and, and the uh, um, preachers and the teachers and and all that. But it said for the they were all for the edifying of the church of the people of God that we all come into one. And so um, the apostles he talked about the missionaries and the apostles going out building churches and we hear stories of missionaries going in, into the missionary field and and, and and starting um and doing things for the orphans and the widows and the orphans and and building schools and building houses and and feeding the people but they're doing it to the glory and honor of God and for an opportunity to bring Christ to them that's what they're taking they're taking Christ into the world and so don't you, we can't 
think that because we're working and working and we're humming Jesus is the lie and we're just doing everything inward, but we're not letting the people know why we're so happy, why we're so blessed and, and why we're able to bless them and what God is up to and what God requires of them. And let's go to 1 Corinthians. Did, 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 did anybody misunderstand me there? Just ask a question. Please ask a question because I want to make sure that I, I that was clear. First Corinthians chapter 15. God left us here unto good works. He saved us by grace. And we need to let the world know that he can do the same for them. First Corinthians 15. Um the, resur the resurrection, you know that the resurrection of Christ, and this is coming up on Easter, is the most, Im the, the very most important part of our gospel message. Because if Jesus hadn't risen, we wouldn't have a savior. He was just one of those who did good works. Like everybody else. And, and, and it wasn't him. The Jews would have been right. He wasn't the Messiah. We're still waiting for him to come. But they were wrong. God raised Jesus from the dead. And now that's our gospel and that's our joy. And this is what we need to be sharing to the, with the world. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received and wherein ye stand, by which... Also, ye are, you, ye are saved if you keep in memory what I've preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I, now here it is, and this is what we all need to, now, I just want to employ you all to memorize this that I'm about to read. Mem re get it in your, um, how do they say it? Meditate on it, memorize it. Verse four, because this is the gospel of Christ that we need to know from the very beginning to the end. We need to know this. It says, um, for I deliver unto you first of all, which is also, which I, which I also received how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and that he was seen of Cephas then of the twelve and after that he he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once of whom the greater part remains unto this present time. And that's in the time that he was talking and telling the story. And some have gone to sleep. But that's the gospel message. Learn that. Learn it just like that. And then things will begin to open up even the more. But we cannot be ashamed of this gospel message. Amen. If we're going to do a work for God, if we're going to labor for him, it's to get this word out to the world. He sent us, he said, now go into all the world. And that's why we're going out. And that's why we're doing work and helping and all that. Otherwise, um, you're just volunteering to keep the, to, to help that brother that's in um, Ecclesiastes to help out the world, to help them to continue in their worldly ways. If you don't have a message, there's good news to give to them. And so don't, don't pat yourself on the back just because, you, you did some something good for somebody. Make sure you told them about the gospel. Then you can, you know, thank God. Uh, another soul, another fish. Amen. Ah, so let's get in. So let's get back into our, that. that's part of the lesson that we needed to know. That's part of, so let's continue in this lesson. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Let's okay. Now let's just look at our verses here. Twenty-eight Psalms, one hundred and twenty-eight says what? Who has it? You should have markers to get there really quick. One hundred and twenty-eight. 
I'll race you. I got it. Who's got it? Come on. But read the verse, the verse two. We're going to read verse two. Um, just read from verse one all the way down to six. Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, that walketh in his way. You can pick it up. Come on. For thou shalt eat the labors of thine hands. Happy shall thy be, and it shall be well with thee. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. Verse 1 says, Blessed is everyone that fears the Lord, that walketh in his way. Amen. He said, For thou, that blessed person, here's the blessing, shall eat the labor of thine hand. Happy shall thy be, and it shall be well with thee. Amen. Amen. So um, this is a, this is, I, I have a header here. God fearing family, the God fearing family. And so um, the wife, thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the side of thine house. The children like olives plants around about your house. These are blessings because of what? Behold, uh, he says, um, all, all around thy table, <laughs> the children shall be like an olive plant around the table. Behold, that thus shall the man be that what? That fears the Lord. That fears the Lord. So what is this telling you? God wants to bless you today on earth while you're living in this life, everyday life. He wants to, he wants to bless you in the natural. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And now here it is right here. If you have the fear of the Lord in you, behold that thus shall the man be blessed that fears the Lord. The Lord shall bless thee out of Zion and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Amen. Amen. So God wants to bless you. I believe there's a song that says God wants to bless you every, everywhere you go or right where you are <laughs> in your home, on your job. He wants to bless you. And this is what this laboring is all about to, uh, for thou shalt eat the labors of thy hands. Go to watch this, go to our next verse, Proverbs chapter 14. Now, just remember what we just heard there. And so in Proverbs chapter 14, verses uh, 23, when, when you guys get it, just go ahead on and read it if you have it. It says, in all labor, there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to penury. Mm -hmm. Poverty, it means poverty. Mm. Uh-huh. This is, that was the Old Testament. And so... In labor, in all labor, there is profit. There's blessings. You, you, you will not labor in vain. You will get your pay because you worked for that reason. But if you're just standing around murmuring and complaining and, and not doing anything, you can, um, then you bring on yourself poverty. And so it, uh, Proverbs talk a lot about working with your hands and not working with your hands, sleeping when you ought to be working. All those verses are probably right in here too. But uh, it's in the book of Proverbs that I just wanted to show you that right after our our, our uh, Psalms verse in the Psalm 28. God, those who have the fear of the Lord in them, you know that you need to be working. You need to do your part to take care of your family. Amen. Amen. The Bible says a man that doesn't take care of his family is worse than an unbeliever. And so God will bless you, but you have to put your hands to the plow as well. All right. Sister Angie? Yes, sir. Um, that same scripture that Marcia read, uh -huh. if I could read it in the easy to read. Sounds good. It says, if you work hard, you will have plenty. If you do nothing but talk, you will not have enough. <laughs> you will not have enough. You'll have plenty if you work hard, but if you just, 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 if it's just coming out your mouth, you've seen the people standing around at, on the job, 
uh, standing around the water faucet or whatever, the coffee and the donuts and everything, and then and know they ought to be at their desk working. And as soon as the boss come walking in, everybody scurrying back to their desk, talking. <laughs> you know, come on, sister, sister, kid, your hand is up. Yes, yeah, I, I just had a, a comment on that scripture. Okay, so it, it's like um, you could be the best person for that job. But you continually murmur all the time to the point that where the person would pick somebody less qualified just because of the reputation you mm. gave yourself by always complaining about things. Wow. You do the work, do a good job, you get good reviews. But if you do the work and constantly complaining, they're not going to go back to you. So that's going to put you in poverty. Wow. Beautiful. That's good. That's good. That's a, that's a good um, um, example right there. It's a good example right there. You know that the Bible lets us know, I believe it's in the book of Romans, that it's just coming to me that there's gifts without repentance. Do you know that we're, that, that, and, and, you, and you can look at little children. They're, they're, these children, they're, they're, they're so smart today. And as we grow up, as we have grown up, we, we found that we're better at some things than other things. And somebody's better at other things than some things. And we have, we have gifts. We don't even realize it, but we have a gift that, that was just given to us from birth. And we just grew into it and starting to realize what you're better at and things like that. But, uh, I, I just had to say that because there's gifts without repenting. Don't think that the only time you're going to, you're getting the gifts, you, you keep looking and waiting for these gifts to come because you're saved when the gift was there all along. You just wasn't using it to the praise and the glory and honor of God. Put your gifts that God has given you to work, to, to put it to work for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, wow. The time is, is almost up. So let me do this. I just, um, there's a lot of reading, so I want to encourage you to read the discussion. At the bottom, it says, remember the eyes of the Lord run to and fro through the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards, towards him. And we find that in, oh, wow. I didn't know the verse was right there. I had to go. I did a search and search and found it. And it's right here. Um, <laughs> Second Chronicles, that what I just wrote, uh, read. It's in Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. It says, God has promised to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So, of course, your labor is not in vain. Whatever you desire, God, fr God, Whatever you desire from God, ask and do not doubt. God will give you what you ask for him, ask him for. And that's, and, and, and we know that this a, a scripture, uh, this, they gave the verse Mark 11, but, and it's also in, um, in Matthews where we, where we read this, um, if we seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. But I just want you to understand that this lesson, our labor is, is, is for the gospel. Our labor, the reason God left us here, saved us. Uh, you remember the, the man on the cross whom Jesus told him, today you'll be with me in paradise. That man got saved on the cross. But he got, but because of where he was, he was at the end of his days. He had nothing to contribute to the work. He couldn't go and tell, uh, tell the world about what Jesus had done for him. His days was up. But we're still here. And we have work to do. Amen. In our, in our central verse, our central verse, it says, um, when the believer feels that his work is in vain, he must learn to trust God's word and not to and not his feelings. Trust God's words and not his feelings. Remember, I read to you Hebrews, um, the book of Hebrews, um, 
uh, where it says God is not unfaithful to that he he will not forget your labor of love and God will not forget your labor of love so so be not weary in well doing amen all of that that you're doing but mainly make sure you bring the gospel along there's a lot of businesses a lot of corporations a lot of um non-profit organizations that's out there that's doing good for the people for this world for the world but they're not doing it in the name of jesus they're not trying to tell anybody they're not they don't even want you coming in their organization trying to to let people know that there's more to it that god has eternal life through Christ Jesus has offered us and he has he says I like that verse it says while we were yet sinners God commended his love towards us that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us and people need to know that but there's organizations that are doing some work but they're not doing it in the name of God so they're keeping people grounded and they're dying without Christ and so it's not all about feeding the poor and helping um, people in this present world. Our job is to help them to get to the get into the heavens, to be in the family of God. Amen. <laughs> All right. So that's our lesson. Any comments, any questions? Um, I, I hope um, I delivered this. Uh, I, well, I know I gave you what the Holy Spirit has given me. And so you take it. Stand on it and be blessed. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. I give you back into the hands of our president. Thank you, Sister Amen. Cheryl. Thank you, Pastor, for this opportunity. Amen. 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 Please give Sister Angie a round of applause for the beautiful Amen. 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 So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you again for coming on to our Bible study. I am now going to turn you over to, in the hands of our wonderful pastor, Elder Larry Cotton. Can we please say, uh, pickle, amen, for our pastor. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> big amen. 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 <laughs> amen. God bless you, what a wonderful job. We thank God thank for you Lord. tonight. Thank you. Talking about your labor is not in vain. What I'm going to do tonight is, um, Sister Cheryl, um, our president, can you read the conclusion? And we're going to pray, and that's going to be it. But the conclusion had a lot in there. If we can just read that, and then we're going to end on that note on tonight. Mm -hmm. I will have a prayer, and we'll end. God okay. bless you. Sure. Um, okay. There are times when the believer has worked without encouragement, without recognition, mm. no pay or honorarium. He must allow the word of God to encourage him and resist every negative thought that comes into his mind. He will have to press on, knowing that he is working for his master. Sometimes it could be painful. Just to think that it seems like you are forgotten or overlooked, but push through the pain and continue to fulfill your purpose. Learn to resist those thoughts and those feelings. Learn to speak to yourself. Remind yourself about what God has promised you. When you trust and obey him and then his praise and then praise God for the victory. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Cheryl. I want to say I thank God for each and every one. I may miss you sometime, and I may not call your name, but I want you to know that um, we recognize and we appreciate all the work you've done and all the work you do. I was just thinking about Deacon Irene Sister Marshall today. They go down and they put the trash out for us and everything. Mother Peace was picking up all the tissue and everything. And sometimes we never say a word about this. And I want to say, I appreciate it, and I thank God for you. Just remember, your labor is not in vain. God sees it, God knows it, and he will bless you for your every effort. And I thank God for everyone, for everything that you do for the Lord and for your church. And 
for your sisters and your brothers. Father God in heaven, we thank you once again for just blessing us. We ask that you look on everyone tonight. We thank you for Sister Angie, this lesson on tonight. Lord, and all of your laborers, all of us, oh God, continue to bless, continue to smile upon us, continue to do what we need you to do in us. And Lord, you said you would never leave us, nor would you forsake us. And Lord, you see everything that your people do from the doorkeeper all the way to taking trash it out. You see it, oh God. And we thank you that you see it and that you will bless us for our efforts. Yeah. And we thank you tonight. Bless your people. Continue to look on everyone. In Jesus' name, thank God and amen. 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 I love